I've been on online political forums since the late 80s with BBSs. Do you remember those? Most likely not. You'd have to be an old fuddy-duddy like myself to remember those. Anyway, I've seen the way that a lot of arguments go over the years. Regular, everyday people who argue for traditional, older ideas usually win in debates against regular, everyday people who argue for newer ideas. People often use tradition and history to manipulate, to belittle, and to humiliate someone with the power of peer pressure, with the power of numbers, pushing the idea that if enough people believe something, it must be true. They often use the argument of, well, people have done it this way for so many centuries, they must have done something right or we wouldn't be here now. Then there's the argument of, well, people have tried different ways a number of times and they've always failed, therefore tradition should be the default way. And for the people trying to argue for newer ideas, unless they've studied enough and have enough resources available to them that they can say, hey, look at this link, or that sort of thing, unless they've studied enough about the newer ideas to counter the arguments of the people pushing for tradition, they usually lose. They fail. And sometimes they fail spectacularly. It's much harder to argue for newer ideas than it is to argue for older ideas. That's just a fact. You may not like that, but that's just how it is. So when people arguing for older ideas promote misogyny, racism, uh, sexism, homophobia, anti-Semitism, etc., the only way to counter them, you know, besides just giving them a bunch of names, oh, you're a sexist, you're a racist, you're, you know, without just calling them names, the only way to, to properly defend against that is to be thoroughly prepared with links to scholarly articles, to links to just a lot of information, and have it right there and ready, you know, with well-formed quotes, with tons of information. Otherwise, they'll generally lose the argument. And as I said, they'll, they'll lose, they'll fail spectacularly. Most people don't spend their lives formally studying those things. So if they get into arguments with people that are pushing misogynistic, racist, homophobic, and anti-Semitic ideas, they'll usually lose. I mean, bluntly, there's almost nothing easier than to take the sexist, racist, homophobic, th those sorts of ideas are things that just about everyone thinks about, but don't say out loud because they know that, hey, it's probably not right. You know, if you go with your gut instinct about everything, yeah, I mean, that those are the types of conclusions that you'll often come to, are, are very, very bigoted. Sometimes the first thought that people have in their head when they see something that matches a stereotype is to, to just automatically assume that that stereotype must be true. You know, it's sort of our default. We have to use our minds to get past that. So again, when, when someone gets into a debate with people who are just going with their gut and going with these, these natural inclinations to be, to be these bigoted things, yeah, unless you're prepared, you're going to lose the argument. You're going to lose. You know, that's just a fact. That's just how it is. We may not like it, but that's how it is. This is why the whole free marketplace of ideas on places like YouTube and Twitter and, and Facebook and a number of other places, that's why this free marketplace of ideas is a miserable failure. When it's not regulated, traditionalism and bigotry almost always wins. This does not mean that traditional ideas are superior. This does not mean that bigoted ideas are superior. It just means that it's more powerful. It just means that it's more the default that people have unless they use their brains to think about it further. I mean, let's be clear here. Everyone is slightly sexist, slightly racist, slightly, you know, either homophobic or heterophobic or has some sort of stereotypes they build in their head uh, based around sexuality. People get these thoughts in their heads. 
and you have to use your brain to get past them. I mean, some of this is similar to uh, religious people pushing traditional religious ideas, arguing against atheistic ideas. The religious people can use the argument that, well, since more people believe in religion, since more people have these traditional religious ideas and they have power, then they must be superior. So this sort of thing is why I don't really have a problem, honestly, with places like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, etc., clamping down on misogynistic, sexist, racist, homophobic, anti-Semitic ideas. With very few exceptions, the everyday people who are on the left have almost no chance of beating traditionalists, you know, right-wing traditionalists, in debates. Sorry, that's just the truth of it. You know, and, and, and again, you can't just say, well, that means that they're superior. That means the right-wingers are superior. No, it just means that it's harder to argue against. You have to, you have to study more. You have to put a lot more effort into it. 